creator of all things. You allowed us to come to this special spot one more time. God, you looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. God, you have blessed us over and over and over again. Many times, heads bowed, knees bowed. We pray to you our confession of what we've done and what we should have done. But God, you always wrap your arm around us and bring us back into our Savior again. God, we thank you because you're the unforgiving. You, 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 God, that, that just forgive us every time. In spite of our wrongdoing, you forgive us, God. But we know you chastise us as we go on this way to, Father God. Father God, we pray for that individual, Father God, that's in our family, Lord, that just seem not, not to get things together. Father God, we pray for them over and over again, but seem like the enemy just seek them out every time and knock them off their path. And Father God, sometimes in our own spirit, Lord, we begin to give up on them because we, we don't, we're tired of praying for them. But Father God, I, I, I want to remind us that you didn't forgive up on us when we kept messing up over and over again. God, give us the, 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 the will, the patience, Father God, to continue to pray for those loved ones in our family. That, Father God, that seem like can't make one end mean to the other. Father God, we know their circumstances, Father God. We know they have a problem with demonic spirits and, and this and that, Father God. But some of us got the same mission, Father God, but just not that bad. But Lord, we thank you, Father God, because you don't measure what type of sin is greater than the other, Father God. You said in your word that sin is sin. And Father God, we all fall short of sin, Father God. So we all got some work need to be done in our lives. So Father God, we, got, we, we, we pray, Father God, that we learn to pray for one another. Lord, help them, Father God, guide them, Father God. Pick them up every time, Father God. As we continue to pray for them, Father God. Father God, that there are some in our family, Father God, there are some in here, Father God, that are sick. God says, giving them reports over and over again, and sometimes, Father God, they don't even know what they're talking about, because we know that you are the healer. They can give the diagnosis, but you can give, you can give the healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for you all being on the healing side, Father God, and not always on the diagnosis side. We know that we can come to you, Father God, in spite of what somebody said, was a physical sickness or, or mental you are our healer, Father God. And you said, and here I said, you look to the heels which coming from hell. For we know that all our help coming from the Lord. Lord, we thank you now, Father God. We thank you, God, for your grace and mercy, Father God, that let us lay down last night, Father God, and sleep all night long. Father God, somebody might have tossed and turned all night long, Father God. Yeah, but at least, Father God, grace and mercy allowed us to toss and turn all night long, Father God. Somebody didn't toss and turn at all. But God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father God, that allowed us to come here, Father God, just to lift up our hands and tell you thank you. We lift up our hands, we thank you, God, for just allowing us to come to the house and worship, Father God, for just to say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, Father God. We thank you for everything that you allowed to come in our lives, Father God. Well, it went to seek us out, Father But those that think that meant for evil, God, you turn around for our good. Father God, we thank you for our ups, our downs, the rain, the, the sunshine, Lord. We thank you for everything, Father God, that you have put in our path, Father But most of all, Father God, we thank you because you have ordered our steps. And God is through all our tribulation. Father God, we pray for those going through the hour of bereavement. Lord, we pray for the Gaddy Smith family, Father God. As they go through the hours of bereavement, Father God. We pray for the ones that, Father God, are traveling, Father God, here and there, Father God, trying, to, Father God, to cover all things that are going on in their lives. God, we just thank you, Lord, because you look way beyond our Father. You just look uh, down the road, Father God, and you said in your word that you know our plans, you know our future, Father You know, Father God, what we're going to face, Father We, You know, Father God, what we're going to go through, Father God. But you said in your word, but yea, we want to abide the shadow of death. We shall not fear no evil. You remind us all the time to be here good courage. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you for the Mount Country Church family, Lord. We thank you for 
everyone that's here. Father God, we thank you for the ones that desire to be here, not able to be here, Father God. But we just thank you for everyone that uttered a prayer request, Father God. Whatever, Father God, that they're praying for, Father God, we trust and believe, Father God, that you will answer our prayer. But Father God, we do know, Father God, that, that you may not come when we want you to come, Father God, but you always on time. And Father God, many of us, Father God, are standing testimony, waving our head, say that whenever we call on it, Father God, my God has never failed me yet. Father God, men may walk away, women walk away, brothers and sisters love won't walk away, but God, you have never walked away from us. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for your unmerited favor. Father, we thank God for how you just continue to bless us over and over and over and over again. Father God, we're still going through a pandemic season. Father God, some are still coming through uh, uh, difficulties in their life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we claim victory, Father God. And all things we run together for our good. Lord, bless our pastor, Father God, as he travel back and forth, Father, from New York, Father God, and uh, 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 Lady Smith also, Father God, and all the other family members that traveled back from New York City, Lord, continue to keep them, Lord. Pray for everyone in the Mount Pleasant Church family, Lord. Pray for everyone in Swartz City, Father God, everyone that's connected to the Mount Pleasant um, brother, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we interceded on their behalf, Father God. We interceded on their behalf, Father God, as one church, one family, Father God, interceded on their behalf that, that they will come through their struggles in Jesus' name. Pray for our deacon ministry and our trusted ministry. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in that sight. Oh, Lord, that strength and redeemer, I need y'all to shout amen. amen. I need some folks to praise God. I need some folks to give God a hand praise. For God is ready to be praised. He's able to do it seated in the body more than you can ask or even think. He can turn it around for your good. Go ahead and prophesy to your neighbor. Just look over and tell us. Tell us how he can turn it around. Just look up and tell us he can turn it around. In spite of what you're going through, he can turn it around. Sickness in your family, he can turn it around. Trouble in your home. For the God that we serve is able.
Lord, Mount Pleasant. You're going to run for a little while here this morning. Run for me. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life.
the worship service once again. We give past, we give honor to Pastor and Lady Smith in their absence, to the deacons, our fellow ministers of the gospel, and all of you who have come here today. I thank God for you. I won't be here for you long, and I'm not just saying that. I truly mean it. Thank you, Lord. It's funny. Y'all know I always got a, a story every time the Lord allows me to get up here. It wasn't my turn, and so now I'm, I'm officially official minister now. I've been put in that place of be also ready. I kept telling myself, Lord, don't you give me no last minute. Get up. I can't take it. But at the same time, I've been praying like, Lord, I want you to free me from my papers. I want you to give me freedom and liberty just to speak. And last night, he was trying to pull my papers from me, but I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. So be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to sing this little song. It says, The Goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. For your From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause Of God, because all my life 
he has been faithful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now for this opportunity to minister your word, God. Father God, you knew that this day was going to come before it even came, God. And so, God, I just thank you right now for the preparation. I thank you right now for the anointing that you have placed upon my life for this designated time, God. Use this word to lift your people, to edify the body of Christ, dear God. Remove Lushina, dear God, and step up in me, God. Remove any distractions, dear God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our scripture today will be coming from Matthew 8, verses 5 through 8. Again, that's Matthew 8, verses 5 through 8. And if you're able to stand. And the word says, when Jesus entered in Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth homesick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. You may be seated. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. I'm going to speak to you from the subject, speak the word and find out. Speak the word and find out. It's funny, I make scripture teas and didn't even know that I was preparing my own sermon for today. But the scripture tea that the Lord gave me, it says, speak the word and find out. So one of the most amazing qualities that God has given us as human beings that I believe is the ability to speak words. And it's even more fascinating to me that we get to choose our own words. You've heard people say to choose your words wisely. Words are free. It's how you use them that may cost you. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. And so our words can be a lifeline or a push over the edge for someone else. Our words have many functions. They can heal. They can hurt. They can uplift or humiliate. They can humble or encourage. The power and impact of our words are endless. So my question for you today that I want you to ponder is, what words are you speaking, and what is the outcome of the words that you're speaking? Are you speaking the word of God, or are you speaking something you read on Facebook or your daily horoscopes? The only way that we are going to make it through this Christian journey is we have to be able to speak the word of God. In order to carry out the good works that he has placed in us, we have to be equipped with the word of God. Isaiah 59 and 21 says, My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips. So if you want God to respond to your prayers and to change your situations, you have to speak his language, which is his word. So what happens when you speak the word? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to give you three things that I believe happen or that I've found to happen when you speak the word. The first thing that happens when you speak the word is that you find it brings reassurance in the times of uncertainty. You know, nothing is more frustrating and aggravating and unsettling and unnerving than not knowing what's going to come next or what the next moment will bring. You know, every day we turn on the news, there's something crazy, there's something wild and outrageous and ridiculous going on in our world, near us and around us. And sometimes I ask myself, Lord, is this real life? You know, there's rumors of wars. It's not just rumors anymore. There's actual wars. There's earthquakes in diverse places. And you're lucky if you make it out the grocery store alive. 
We have kids making school threats just for the thrill of it. We have changes in our weather. I don't know about you, but we went from heat to AC in one week. Uncertainties. And if you aren't careful, you'll become a prisoner of fear. You know, there's a quote that says, you should hope for the best and prepare for the worst. But society today tells us, now you have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. Well, both of those sound good, but guess what? They don't provide any reassurance. But when you speak the word of 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, you find that the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. When you speak the word, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, you find out that you don't have to be anxious for anything, but in everything in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your request known to God. And the peace of God, that peace that gives our hearts reassurance, it transcends all understanding and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So despite life uncertainties, when you speak the word of God, when you speak Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, you find out that if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. That's the power of speaking the word. You'll find reassurance. The second thing that I found to happen when you speak the word is that you find that it relieves you of the obligation to take matters into your own hand. You know, there are times when we find ourselves in situations which we don't have the know-how, the wherewithal, or the ability to fix, change, or handle. And when we left to our own devices, our courses of action sometimes leaves us emotionally flustered, causing us to make permanent decisions in temporary emotions. And the more we continue to take matters into our own hands, we find ourselves making a bad situation worse. And then you realize what a tangled web we weaved ourselves. But I'm glad to know that we have an advocate in Christ Jesus. One who says in Psalms 118 and 7, declares that me, that the Lord is on our side, and he is our helper. So I'm not obligated to take matters into my own hands. I can just speak Romans 8 and 28, for I know that those who love the Lord and the things that are called according to his purpose, it shall work out for our good. We serve a God who knows all. He was there when there was conversations had in our absence. He saw the misdeeds that were done to us. Nothing happened by surprise because he knows every when, where, why, and how. Therefore, we have to know when to leave things alone and put it in the master's hand. We can simply speak the word. And we find out in 1 Peter 5 and 7, it admonishes us to cast all your cares. That means every worry, every anxiety, every concern, every problem to cast it onto Jesus for he cares for you. Speaking the word relieves you of that obligation to fix things yourself. Then lastly, told you, lastly, when you speak the word, you find out that when you rely on Jesus, it ain't nothing but a word. How about that? When you speak the word, you find out when you rely on Jesus, it ain't nothing but a word. The word tells us in John 15 and 7 that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, that we can ask what he will and it shall be done for us. You might have a friend or a family member that's trying to get on a job that you at and you just happen to be that somebody that knows somebody and they ask you, well, can you put in a word for me? And you tell me, yeah, I'll put in a word for you. And at that point, you have just lessened if not erase that person's fears and anxiety and worries about whether or not they will get the job. Because now they have placed complete confidence in you saying, I'll put in a word for you. Then we might have that friend or that favorite aunt or uncle or that parent that we can go to and we can ask them for absolutely anything. 
I'm that one for my daddy. We can ask absolutely anything and everything, and it doesn't matter how big, how small, how much of an inconvenience, how much it costs. We can ask them anything, and their response will be, oh, that ain't nothing but a word. God is the same way. If you speak his word back to him, to him, oh, it ain't nothing but a word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I have this confidence that I can ask the Father what I will. And that's why we don't have to be afraid. We can go boldly before the throne of grace and make our request known unto the Father. Well, in our text here, we have the centurion man. The Bible says that Jesus came to Capernaum and there was this Roman soldier who's known as the centurion. He came to Jesus begging him to heal his servant. The word says that the, he told the Lord that my servant is lying, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said to the centurion without hesitation or reservations, I'll come to heal him. The Bible says that the officer responded, Lord, I don't want you to come to the house. I don't deserve for you to be under my roof. But just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And while the officer recognized that he himself was a man of authority, he could tell his soldiers to go there and they would go. He would tell them to come here and they would come. He would tell them to do this and they would do it. But he realized that even in his own authority, he had limitations. But he knew somebody who had been given all the authority in heaven and on the earth. And though he wasn't worthy, even though he didn't deserve it, he was a man of great faith. And he didn't, he didn't hesitate to make his request known. Because he knew that with Jesus, it was nothing but a word. He didn't need Jesus to go to his house to lay hands on his servants. He wasn't expecting some grand ritual. He didn't even need to see the manifestation of his request. All he needed was for Jesus to just speak the word. Jeremiah 23 and 23 says, I am the God who is near, and I am also the God who is far away. That centurion man was confident that God's supernatural healing power could transcend distance, space, and time, and capable of reaching his servant where he was and bringing his healing. That centurion man had sense enough to know that his word alone didn't have the power to heal. So he trusted and relied solely on Jesus speaking the word. The Bible says that Jesus was amazed at the centurion man's faith. And he said unto him in that 13th verse, he told him, Centurion man, you go, and let it be done to you just as you believed it would be. And in that moment, the servant was healed. And all it took was speaking the word. Well, I come to let you know today that in case you didn't know, or maybe you were doing life all wrong like I was, and you didn't know that you could use the word to make God move. Well, I got good news and I got some bad news for you. The good news is that crying won't fix it. Having a pity party won't change it. You can cuss and complain. You can even try to sex it out. You can smoke and drink it out. But it'll only give you temporary relief. But you still won't have that lasting release that you need from it. But the good news is Somebody say the good news is I come bringing good news today that the only way to combat the challenges and uncertainties of this life, you got to speak the word. Psalms 119 and 11 says, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. So no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through, just speak the word and you'll find out that we serve a God who is active and alert and he's watching over his word just to perform it. When you speak the word, you'll find out that God is faithful because Isaiah 55 and 11 says every word that comes out of the mouth of God, it won't return to Oh! 
The Bible said that when we all on one accord, when we all on one accord, he'll come in the building. And I believe everybody here gave God the praise. Now we need to claim victory right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody tell God, thank you. Somebody tell God, thank you. Somebody tell God, thank you. Come on, praise God. Amen. Some of us got jobs that we ain't got no business 
happy, but you want to tell God, thank you. And somebody already claimed the job that they've been wanting for a long time. Go ahead and tell him. It's coming your way. It's coming. It's coming. Because you're going to speak the word. You're going to speak the word. It's coming. Oh, come on now. Thank you. Trick every 